Guys, it's your girl T, and there has been so much drama concerning the Real Preachers of LA, or Preachers of LA, whatever the hell the show's called. Anyways, it's been crazy. So in this second week's episode, I'm doing a recap, and basically this week you see Pastor Jay, who is the white pastor on the show, he's dealing with a transgender, transsexual um, parishioner. Her name was initially April, and she was like an up-and-coming skater. And out of the blue, April decides to go and get a sex change, and now she's going by the name David. And I cannot lie, this is the best sex change job I've ever seen. I swear, she looks like a man. You know, sometimes you see like a transsexual female, you can just kind of tell like, okay, you can still see little female parts. She looked like a straight up dude. I couldn't even call her April. She looks and sounds and acts like a David. So it was interesting to see how he was trying to handle that. He kind of didn't want to call her David and he was trying to, you know, I think he was kind of stuck because he feels like, you know, God makes no mistakes and she's totally changed her gender. But then they're still trying to support her because she was a member of their church family. So I kind of like Jay. He seems pretty cool. And I've gotten to see that he's really about that skate life. So it seems like he was really into skateboarding and bringing skaters religion. And that's like his whole thing. Last week, I didn't really understand why he was skateboarding. But now I have more in-depth knowledge. And there's nothing wrong with it um, because I guess he's about that skate life. He tries to represent like people who are more into like an alternative sporty lifestyle opposed to just a straight and narrow Christians. So another interesting thing that happened on the show is that Bishop Ron Gibson and his first lady, they decided to have a sit down, a dinner with Dietrich Haddon and his baby's mother, Dominique. Um, I believe they're married now, but at the time they were not married. And they were having a whole discussion about their relationship, you know, if they sincerely wanted to get married, or if they felt pressure to get married because of what people thought about them. And then he asked Dietrich Haddon, are they shacking up? And Dietrich Haddon got like really, really, you know, defensive. He was really upset and, you know, shacking up's not in the Bible and da 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 da. And I didn't understand why he was so mad. It's like, you know, if you're not sleeping with her, then just say so, you know, but I don't believe that they're not sleeping together. And that's what I didn't understand. People were like, well, they can't live together because they promised their church they wouldn't. He can't continue to live in sin. But I feel like they're probably still sleeping together just because they're not in the same household does not mean that they're not having little quickies here and there. So y'all can buy that shit if you want to. I'm not buying that they just stopped sleeping together, you know, for, for a whole year, even after they slept together before the divorce was final and he made a child. I'm not buying it, but y'all believe what y'all want to. You can't feed me shit and call it sugar. So in another scene, we also see Pastor Noel Jones. His, I don't know what you call this one. Her name is Loretta. I don't know if she is his girlfriend, his friend, his jump off. They have no official title. He won't wife her. She wants a more serious, committed relationship. You know, she says she's uh, in between a friend and a girlfriend to him. You know, their whole dynamic is just creepy to me. First of all, you're supposedly a man of God, you're a pastor, you're obviously having a sexual relationship with this woman that's not even your girlfriend. You know, they don't have any type of titles. It's like he wants to be a celebrity, he wants to be a star, he wants to leave his options open. And there's nothing wrong with that, but it just seems kind of weird when it's coming from a pastor who's supposed to be pastoring to people about relationships and, you know, marriages and, and not getting divorced and everything else. But yet, and still, he has this woman that he's sleeping with, but they don't have any true commitment. So their whole dynamic is just really, really weird to me. So this week's episode was pretty interesting. But what made it even more interesting was all the drama that went on on the blogs. And I want to shout out Seneca Harris for this piece of news. So if you guys haven't heard, T.D. Jakes was preaching in front of his church. And he, and he basically shaded the real preachers of L.A. Um, it was crazy. He went on this whole spiel. And he said that he would never be a preacher of L.A. And he made his own money and he came into himself. Here goes a snippet of what he said right here. Go ahead and read it. After this hit the blogs, a lot of people had different opinions about the whole T.D. Jake situation. Some folks said he was just hating. He was mad that he was on a reality TV show. Other folks said the devil is a liar. He's just as corrupt as these guys that he's talking about. You know, and other people agreed with him. Um, but Fred Hammond ended up coming out and kind of, you know, defending the preachers of L.A. So it's almost like all these pastors are beefing with the preachers of L.A. It's just really crazy how everything is just kind of spiraling out of control on the Internet. Everybody has an opinion of this show. So, if that's not crazy enough, Funky Dineva basically spilt the hot tea on Dietrich Haddon. So what happened is that Funky Dineva was minding her, his, her own business when a picture came across her phone. And basically, Dietrich Haddon's ex-jump off from when he was married to his ex-wife, it was a woman that he was dating back in 2008, she decided to leak naked pictures that he took of himself in the mirror. Now, I'm going to keep it real with y'all. I was shocked 
but I was not appalled. When I seen that big old beef stick, I was like, Lord have mercy. Damn, I wasn't expecting all that beef. <laughs> I was just like, wow, you know, shit, it woke me up. <laughs> Sometimes you need to see some shit like that, you know, to get your day going. But a lot of folks started going in on Bishop Haddon. Folks were saying he was the devil and how dare he take selfies and what man of God takes naked pictures. And, you know, you know, all the Bible thumpers started preaching really, really hard on the blogs against his naked selfie. You know, and that's why I said on my Facebook page, he is a human being just like me and just like you. Just because he's a pastor does not make him any different from anybody else. If Raheem from the hood can take a selfie, why can't the pastor? Now, do I expect a little bit more from the pastor? Yes, I do. But at the end of the day, that's why you don't worship the pastor. You put your faith in God and not in man because every single time, man will let you down. So to all y'all who put him up on a pedestal, you know what I'm saying, and then he went through the whole thing with his wife, and then y'all tore him down, then y'all put him back on a pedestal, but now y'all's mad because these selfies came out. You know, I can't keep it with the crazy Christians of the internet. I don't feed into it. You know, I feel like he's a human being. A lot of men do the same thing. He's done nothing different than a lot of these guys out here do. And I just, I, I didn't have no complaints about the picture. I ain't even gonna lie. It was just kind of shocking because I wasn't expecting to see him like that. But, you know, no complaints. I think he should be embarrassed if he was small, but you know, it looked decent to me. But... <laughs> The whole thing was just a mess. I couldn't believe Funky Dineva posted that and blasted it all over the internet. You know, so I just, I, I just can't, I can't take this show seriously. I just can't. You got one pastor who claims he's not shacking up, but then selfies leak of him. You can't tell me Dominique ain't still hitting that. Get the hell out of here. Y'all can believe what y'all want to believe. I'm not buying it. Then you got another pastor who has a girlfriend slash jump off, but he don't really want to claim her, but then he wants her to do all the wifely duties like cooking and cleaning. You know, I just don't understand the whole dynamic. That's why I said you don't look to men to lead you. You know, if you want to be religious and you believe in God, you just need to read the word. I don't look to anybody else for salvation, especially not no human being, because we're all human. We all make mistakes. We all fall from grace. Nobody is perfect. So I think people need to stop putting these men on such a high pedestal and stop acting like they expect so much from them. They're just regular people. You know what I'm saying? So the, this week has been really interesting for the preachers of LA. So anyways, go ahead, leave a comment. Let me know your thoughts on the entire situation. I will post a link below so you guys can watch the, ep the entire episode if you're interested. I will also post a video of TD Jakes down below as well. As far as the nude selfies, you're going to have to search for that on your own. I'm not going to post a link to some damn penis pictures, okay? No, ma'am. I will not be doing that. So anyways, go ahead, leave a comment. Let me know your thoughts on the entire situation. All right. Deuces.